So I thought I'd do a, a quick video about um, INTPs and relationships uh, and love, um, based based on my own experiences and and also from, from just from reading, um, you know, information from other INTPs and from other um, sources online. Now I'm I'm by no means um, an expert um, when it comes to Myers. Briggs typology, um, but and I, well, I think I'd be lying if I said that I I, I fully understood it all um, and how it all works. But um, yeah, so so if I'm wrong about any of the functions or, or anything like that, then um, feel free to to let me know. Now, the INTP's lowest function is um, extroverted feeling, which basically means that we don't tend to express our feelings very often. Um, and because this is our lowest function, it's it's generally understood that INTPs um, tend to have trouble interpreting other people, and and they generally do not pick up on or or feel um, emotional when when a lot of other people or a lot of other personality types do. Um, now this this doesn't this obviously doesn't mean that um, we INTPs don't have emotions because we we do. It's just that we are not necessarily ruled by them as as we have more other dominant functions. Um, our dominant function being um, introverted thinking, and so and so it, it generally it takes more than it does for most other types to make us show something emotionally or reveal something about ourselves, um, and so. Yeah, if, if you're if you're having a conversation with someone and your conversation is emotionally void, um, then there's a good chance that you're probably talking to an INTP. So in regards to love and close relationships, this could be one of the only times that we uh, reveal our emotional side, and um, and it's this only well, there's a good chance that this will happen when we are. Or when we get close to somebody emotionally, so as I said, INTPs are, are emotionally inexpressive and emotionally void, um, which is why it takes quite a lot for an INTP to to commit to somebody or to commit to anything, because you know we 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 don't tend to like have many uh, sort of friendships or relationships. We don't tend to have many friends. Um, and the friends that we, we do have, um, we are very serious about them. Um, you know, we don't tend to mess about or, or play games. We only, you know, if we choose to be friends with someone, then it's for a very specific reason. So if an INTP doesn't enjoy somebody's company, then they are not going to become friends with them. Or they're not going to become close friends with them. Um, you know, they are incredibly selective in who they open up to emotionally and this is because um, we, we, we INTPs tend to focus our attention inwards on ourselves rather than externally and um, as a result um, we're not generally in tune with other people's needs and other people's feelings um, and this is why we, we tend to appear to be quite spaced out or lost or um, away with the fairies in our own little worlds. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes we can be completely oblivious to the world around us and what is, is going on around us. So if you can get some sort of genuine emotional response from an, from an INTP, then um, you're doing something right and, and you've definitely earned the trust of them. Um, I mean, it's usually difficult for an INTP to find a mate or a partner who they can feel close to, and so their partner generally has to earn their trust or earn the trust or respect of the INTP before they would even consider the possibility of a relationship. Um, and this is why INTPs don't tend to have um, many sort of casual, short-term relations. Now, as far as relationships themselves go, it's it's said that we we we're supposed to view love very highly, um, 
and it's it's something that all INTPs apparently strive for, as it's said that um, it said that we have a very unique understanding of love, and uh, I mean I know from my own personal experience that love is something which is you know it's very in intriguing, and um, I think that this is because being intuitive thinkers we are obviously more thinking orientated than we are feeling orientated and so as I've said before our extroverted feeling function is our lowest function and so we desire to get close to someone um, so that our extroverted feeling can be uh, can be expressed or experienced um, and, and with this being our lowest function, it, it means that we find it very difficult to, to read people. And, and so perhaps in a, in a close relationship, this is when our extroverted feelings can come to the surface or be increased. And this is why I think INTPs regard love very highly, because it, it has the potential to offer us something that we are lacking. I think another reason why love intrigues us is because it is something which we cannot um, we cannot rationalise or intuitively understand. Um, I mean, I know that I, from my own experiences, I I see love as like an abstract concept or idea that we derive from experience. Um, you know, I think that it's basically just the ultimate romanticism of a very base level human behavior which is obviously our instinctual need or desire to to procreate and um, so obviously the only difference between a close friendship and a, a relationship is the, the whole sexual element to it which is the, the desire or instinct to uh, mate or to procreate and so when we have a close relationship and there is a sexual element to it, then this feeling that accompanies it is what we would generally describe as love. And so perhaps being the, the very logical people that we are, um, we are perhaps very intrigued or become intrigued by this, by the irrationality of love. And so perhaps we secretly long or desire to be wrapped up and kind of get lost in, in an extroverted feeling that we cannot rationalise. I know from my own personal experience that love and closeness in a relationship certainly brings out something in me that I can't particularly get anywhere else. Um, and I was with my ex-girlfriend for nearly three years, so in all the relationships that I've been in, I've tended to, which hasn't been many, but they, they tend to last uh, a relatively long time in comparison to... Um, well, I certainly don't tend to have many sort of short-term uh, casual relations, really. And saying that, the, um, the relationships that I have been in have all been with INT types. Um, I mean, my ex-girlfriend was an INT gen, I think. I mean, I'm just guessing that because... Um, she never actually did the, um, the Myers-Briggs test, um, but from my understanding, that's what I'm guessing she she was. Um, and they, they say that the perfect partner for an INTP is an ENTJ, I think. I think it's an ENTJ. And so the, the extroverted aspect of their personality can complement your introverted personality. But uh, I think another important thing about the INTP ENTJ partnership is that the ENTJ and the INTP they both share the intuitive thinking function which I guess is, is pretty critical for an INTP to want to be in a relationship with them as an INTP would not want to be with somebody who they didn't consider to be intelligent and I think as a, as a general rule um, I think introverted thinkers tend to be perhaps more intelligent I mean perhaps I'm completely wrong 
there. And perhaps that's just me being big headed or something, but um, I'm guessing that that is generally how it works. So yeah, I, I tend to definitely be more attracted to um, to INT types of personalities, which is, is probably not the best match because generally INTPs are not very good at initiating relationships. And so if you meet a fellow INTP or a fellow INT type, it could be potentially incredibly difficult to actually get the whole relationship started as, as INTs are not very good at showing their emotions and feelings. And so can um, can come across as very cold and, and give off extremely cold or at best perhaps mixed signals which could be incredibly frustrating and also on that note INTPs do not like to play games I know that I certainly don't and so if a girl is interested in me then playing game if they you know start to play games with me or, or, or perhaps even flirting with me or, or something like that then it's just going to um, probably annoy me immensely um, and it's it's just not going to to work at all and so yeah if you if you are a different type and you are in love with an INTP and you want to or you have an interest in an INTP and you want to let them know that you have an interest in them then um, you can't just flirt with them or, or play games with them or anything like that because they I mean for a start they probably won't have any idea that, um, that you're actually flirting with them because um, as I said they, they generally lack extroverted feeling to actually interpret people's behaviour and so if they do pick up on something then they will probably just try to analyse it or something and, and they won't or they, or they certainly won't want to feel like you are playing games with them so the best way to, to let them know that you like them is to simply just tell them straight um, don't mess about don't try and play any kind of mind games with them I mean I, I know this all sounds pretty um, pretty cliche but I think when it comes to INTPs that is definitely the best way to go about it you know, just explain to them rationally and logically how you feel. You know, don't try and give off mixed signals or try and flirt with them or anything like that because it's, it's probably just going to confuse them. Um, and so, um, yeah, what else can I say? I, I also find it quite interesting that Carl Jung, who, um, who was the, 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 sort of the co-developer of, of the whole Myers-Briggs typology, he actually said that um, introverted thinkers had a vague dread of the opposite sex, which I mean I think that's certainly true, and, and a very it's quite an interesting way of looking at it, um, and it's, it's certainly true I think, especially for us INTPs. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what else to say. So thanks for watching.